month and happy November! I am really excited this month. I had a request for a awesome tune, so I'm gonna fill it. Uh, this is a tune called Bees Wing Hornpipe. It's by James Hill. And um, not only is it a fantastic tune in its own right, but it's a really great excuse to look at the fun ways, uh, the different ways in which hornpipes are played throughout the world of fiddling. So uh, I'm going to play this tune and I'll start it out as a dotted hornpipe, sometimes also called a clog, like you would hear in um, Canada or in Ireland or really lots of parts of the Celtic regions. And then I'll go into a straight or even hornpipe. Same tune, but different feel, and that's more how you'd hear it played in the American or contest styles. Both are valid, both are awesome, and both are the bees way. major. Um, and if that scares you, don't worry. It's actually not scary. In fact, in uh, past tunes of the month, we have looked at some other B-flat tunes and how it's really easy, especially on the fiddle, to talk about um, your finger patterns, right? That to play B-flat major, all I need is this finger pattern. I'm trying to show it effectively. Whole, whole, half. Whole steps are where your fingers are stretched. Half step is where they're touching. And notice that instead of being up here in first position with a space at the end of my fingerboard, I'm scooched all the way back to the nut. That's the name of this little bump at the end of your fingerboard. All the way back to the nut in half position. So my half steps and whole steps are very big, especially my whole steps. But if I play this pattern, let's actually do that. Find the, push your first finger all the way back to the nut on B flat. And let's play whole, whole, half, and just a B flat major scale. Notice it's the same pattern on both strings, back down. And if I keep going, same idea. So it's actually very easy. If you're new to B flat major, you may want to go back and check out a couple of those past uh, two of the month B flat tunes where we really went over that finger pattern and got comfortable in it. Um, because with the bees wing, we're going to talk a lot about the styling of the hornpipe, which is one of my favorite nerdy things. So why are hornpipes played so differently in different parts of the fiddle world? Well, hornpipes are nautical tunes, historically speaking. They went with the sailors on the ships all around the world, and the sailors would dance to them. And the thing uh, that you can use to identify whether a tune is a hornpipe or not, I, I call it its musical fingerprint, is the hornpipe ending. Those three quarter notes. You can say hornpipe end. And that's the thing that identifies it as a hornpipe. Whether you're playing it even rhythm, more like a reel, or dotted rhythm, more like a clog, stress, bass, shottish, those kinds of things. Okay, 
So we're going to learn the bee's wing here, and uh, just for fun, we're going to learn it as a dotted hornpipe. So put your clog hat on. We've done clogs in past tunes of the month. And we're going to play tumpty, 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 that very, very jaunty dotted rhythm. All right, I'm going to play the A section slowly a couple of times so you can hear how it goes, and then we'll break it down and uh, look at ways to make it easier and more accessible to play. Right? Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> section and B section and within each section having a part one a part two part one will usually come back and then there's an ending well we've also seen in past two of the month sometimes composers like to break with that form to create extra interest and intrigue and uh, mr. James Hill does that here he does a part one and a part two but instead of just going back back to part one he does an extended grand ending and it's a very cool thing because he's actually gonna use the same grand ending in the B section so if you learn it here in the A, you already have learned half the B section, lickety split, ta-da, all that. <laughs> all right, so you can hear lots of arpeggios you know from past turn of the months with me and past fiddling experience with the rest of your world. Arpeggios mean leave your fingers down on the string. I call it glue finger, all right? So we're gonna start, I have three pickups going up the scale to my B flat, right? Now I'm going to start out with a B flat major arpeggio. This is in root position, so I have my odds teens, one and three. Now an F major arpeggio, evens team. And now back to B flat, but the lower station. Yeah, so you see how that bottom there? It's just making a little jump. You see that figuration of arpeggios in um, harm pipes all the time where it'll take us, uh, whether it's the root third or the fifth, it'll take a station of the arpeggio, jump up two stations, blah, blah. You understand what I mean by station? So it'll go like third, root, fifth, third, root, third, fifth, root, fifth, third, root, whatever the thing is. That made sense in my head. You with me? Yes, good. Okay, let's do it again. Part one. B flat major in root position, which is your odds team. F major, evens team. Back to B flat. So it's just a little cascade of arpeggios. If we trace it, it goes down like that, right? Dupa, 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 bo, 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 bo. Try it again. B flat. Back to B flat. Not bad. Try it again. Two, three pickups. B flat. F. Back to B flat. One more time for good measure. B flat. fingers down every time I cross the string like here you see how I leave my first finger down the whole time every time you can leave down a finger it will make the string crossings easier okay so that's part one if you need to practice any of that a few more times just go ahead and rewind the video I'll play with you as many times as you like <sighs> the magic of the internet okay and now I'll go on to part two part two is an E flat major arpeggio 
back to B flat. And then a cheeky little triplet ending. Okay, so let's deal with that for a second. Now both of these arpeggios are split in octaves, so it's going to be a mixed even and odds team. For E flat, odds are on the bottom, evens on the top, right? Technically that's a C minor arpeggio, isn't it? Now B flat, evens on the bottom, odds on the top. Feel that little split in your hand? Odds, evens, evens, odds. Try it. C minor or E flat to B flat. Try it again. Start odds. Yeah, and now the triplets are the easy part. All right, that little fancy ending is actually the, the, the break, right? We have neighbor tongue go down the we all know I love to make up silly words. Neighbor tongue go down the scale. Good, that's part two. Let's put it together. It's the arpeggio starting on your E flat, C minor arpeggio, and B flat major, and then the triplets. Here comes triplets. Triplets. Good, one more time, part two. Get your E flat ready to go. Odds team. Let's pause for a second and put part one and part two together, right? The whole first half of the A, the part that really is A section. Ready? Part one is pickups. B flat, odds team. F, evens team. Back to B flat. Cascade down. E flat. Before you get it in your ears, same pickups like the beginning. Okay, so it sounds so, 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 so fancy, doesn't it? Um, sometimes I call it the hoppy arpeggios, right? Instead of cascading, it's going ba, 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 ba. Really using the whole range of the instrument. Now, whenever the melodic line is hopping around like that, we have to get very, very, very calm with our technique, right? So left hand, fingers are going to stay down on the string like crazy. Right hand, when you have those string crossings, you're going to stay very close to both strings, right? Instead of crossing from the far side of the A string to the far side of the E string, stay on the near side. See how little you have to move your arm to cross between the two strings. Now, how I actually practice this, if I want to play it well, is not one note at a time. I practice it in double stops. And this is a secret, not so secret way to practice successfully. Because in order for, when it goes quickly, in order for my hand to be ready for my bow, I actually don't put ba, ba, those down as two separate notes. I put them down together. If my fingers aren't ready on both strings to receive my bow, I'm going to get a scrambly mess. So we're actually going to learn it in double stops. All right. The first chord is B flat major. Put your first finger across both strings and then plop down three and four together across the string. That's a sixth. Everybody see that? So first finger barred on both strings, that's B flat, and then plop down the sixth between three and four. Good, practice that for a second. 
notice when I plop down my three and four, my second finger comes down too, and there's my whole, whole half, my finger pattern for B flat major. Practice that again. Good. The next one is F major chord. All right, so it starts, this is also sixths. All right, so your open string in your first finger. And then plop down two and three, also across the string. Do you notice that again, I have whole step, whole step? Find that F chord. First finger on both strings. Whole, whole half. F major. Now I got great news for you. The next two chords are the same patterns in your fingers, just over a string. So if you put your first finger on your two middle strings, that's E flat. And I do the exact same plop to the sixth. Do you see it? First finger on both strings, three and four. And then the lower B flat chord, open in one, two, and three. Isn't that sweet? So we get this a lot of times in tunes that a pattern will appear on the, a higher set of strings and then the exact same pattern bumps down across the string. That's the whole pattern. That's the whole part that's considered so hard about this tune. It's not so bad when you're double stopping it, is it? Let's try from the top. Got your first finger on both strings, B flat. F chord, hop across the string for the same patterns, doing E flat chord, B flat. Not too tricky. It's also great for your sixth. In past two of the months where we worked on double stops, we talked about playing sixths, right? Where you have neighbor fingers, right? One and two, two and three, three and four, open one. And the higher number fingers on the higher string, so they're, they're teams that meet across the string. Um, this passage is all about playing six, in case you hadn't noticed. So let's do it again in double stops. B flat. F. E flat. The same across the string. Lower B flat. Very good. Last time, like this. It's actually C minor that we already did. Down the spaniel. And here's our friend. Horn, pipe, and that's that musical fingerprint that tells us it's a horn pipe. Try it from the E flat arpeggio. Down the spaniel. Horn, pipe, and ah, and I forgot we're playing this as a dotted horn pipe. So let's do that same thing but with a dotted rhythm. practice for what we're going to do once we put the whole tune together when we turn it into an American style hornpipe instead of a Celtic style hornpipe and flatten out the rhythm. Uh, so let's do the dotted rhythm again, E flat. Down the scale. And that's it, that's the whole grand ending. Let's put it together. Play the first part as double stops and then at the end with the E flat chord like we just did. Ready, double stops, B flat. B flat. Finish it up. Horn, pipe, and good. Do it again. Get your double stops ready. B flat. This will get better and better and better. Now, once your left hand feels really good, then what you can do 
Your left hand's gonna stay exactly the same, but instead of your bow playing the double stop, your bow is gonna alternate between two strings, okay? So if you're still working on it, keep playing double stops. I'm gonna split my bow up for the string crossing. Same exact thing, left hand, play those double stops, but bow's gonna alternate strings instead of just playing in the middle of bow. Ready? And... F. Cross for E flat. Lower B flat. Finish it up. Horn, pipe, and pretty good. Try it again. Your choice if you want to do the crossy bow or the double stop bow, but left hand's the same. Two strings, fingers on two strings. B flat. F. Cross for E flat. Lower B flat. Finish it up. Horn, pipe, and. Yeah, if you want to put double stops on that, I'm playing sixth. The B flat six, and then the sixth to the D. Right, it ends up being one open, that's the B flat chord, and then two, three, that's the F chord. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the whole A section. Shall we put it together? Part one, part two, grand ending that you think and play as double stops. Here we go. One, two, beginning. B flat odds team. Evens team F. B flat cascade. Part two, E flat. B flat. Ready, triplets? Major tone, go down the scale. Here it comes, grand ending. B flat, F, cross for E flat, lower B flat, finish it up. Our friend, horn, pipe, and good, repeat it. B flat, part two, E flat. blows up in your face immediately, right? So I call that a tricky tune. I don't believe in hard tunes, right? Fiddle tunes, come on, they're just little dance melodies. How hard can they really get? But definitely there are tricky tunes that if your hand isn't very organized and knows exactly where it needs to go, it breaks, <laughs> right? So if that's the case, that just means you need to practice it a lot and you need to practice in a row, making sure times in a row that your fingers get down that you leave that first finger down, that you measure that six across the string. And getting those streaks together is what's gonna build the resiliency and the comfort with this tune. By the way, if you can play this in B flat, there ain't nothing scary left in B flat, right? It doesn't get any jumpier than this uh, little grand ending here. So if you can do this, you are set for life. All right, so that's the whole A section. Now, great news for you, because of that grand ending, we only have half a B section to learn. And uh, spoiler alert, there are going to be some really familiar patterns. I'll play it for you so you can hear it. You might even want to jump in on the grand ending with me because you already know it. Here it goes. <laughs> You already know this trip only. 
to learn there at all. All right, so the B section is, we could call it part one, part two, it is, but it's even easier to think of it just as a chordal sequence, right? A same little pattern that keeps happening, it repeats itself with different arpeggios. And how the pattern goes, it goes, uh, crawls, uh, like leaps up the arpeggio, dum, ba, dum, bum, all the way down. Dum ba dum ba all the way down. Do you see that stair stepping? And then come down, I'm tracing the, the pitch in the air. Can you tell? So of course it happens on B flat first. We have two pickups. Here, odds team. Let's try just that to establish the pattern. Go down the scale, two pickups. Here starts the pattern. So again, I'm jumping stations of the arpeggio, right? That's root, third, fifth, root. So I'm going third, root, fifth, third, root, all the way down. Right, root, third, fifth, third, root, fifth, third, root, stair-stepping up. Try it again, B flat. repetitions just for this video. Now of course we're gonna do it with the F chord. Now to make this easy once I put my first finger down I glue it down. Did you catch that? Keep your first finger down. Keep your second finger down too because look we're coming back to both. Yeah leave those fingers down. Try to get an F chord. Now down to the E flat chord. Remember the E flat feels exactly like B flat, just down a string, odds team. Now here, instead of the full arpeggio, we're just doing a little broken thirds, evens team, odds team. And now here's our friend, the triplets. Neighbor tone go down the scale. That's it. That's all that's new, and even all that wasn't new. Try it from the beginning of the B section. Two pickups down the scale for a B flat staircase. B flat. Switchy bow, your choice. F chord. Hop over for E flat. B flat. Finish it up. Horn, pipe, and ready to repeat the whole section. Staircase, B flat. entirety. Congratulations, you made it. Ding, 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 ding. Now, yeah, it's tricky tune, so it's going to want a little bit of practice to get really comfortable. That's totally fine. This is one that anytime I pull it back out, I really got to practice this guy because if my fingers are even a millisecond late to a glue finger that they need, right, to being double stopped across the string, I'll miss it, right? I'll have a little flub, a little, little stumble, 
in my sound. I had a couple when I played it for you back at the beginning of this video. Don't go back and check. You'll find them. You probably already found them. It's just, it's a tune that likes to catch you being a little bit lazy. So don't let it catch you <laughs> and practice it so that way it can be clean and easy. All right. So now you know the tune, let's pretend you've practiced that. And um, let's look at what you can do with it as a hornpipe, right? We've been learning it as a dotted hornpipe, sometimes also called a clog. Now, we've done uh, other dotted hornpipes in Tune of the Month. And if you hung out with me for those, you know all about how you can stylize and decorate a clog. That anytime you have a little skips like that, you can triple it. Of course, every time you put in a triplet, the next two are going to be a hooked up bow. So you get back down bow on the down beat. See what I do with that B section rather than the staircase plane? I decorated it. I can do the same thing with the F chord. And the E flat. What if I wanted to do two decorations? Or even <laughs> you could get so many triplets going in a row, right? Anytime you have a duple that's a skip, you can put a fill in triplet, right? Fill in the note that's missing and it decorates it right up. Of course, if you're going to do three notes as a triplet, hook the next two up bow to satisfy your bowing. We've done this in past two of the month. You've done it the rest of your life. You're totally comfy with it. Or now you know what to practice. All right, so I could put in triplets wherever I wanted to make this dotted hornpipe super, super, super peppy. If you want some ideas, go back to my performance at the beginning. I think I did quite a few of them because I love doing that to clocks. Now, what if we wanted to play it more as an American style hornpipe, a straight hornpipe? Well, now it looks a lot more like a reel, right? That we're, instead of doing tum ti tum ti tum ti that dodger rhythm, we're gonna smooth it out. Even rhythm, even rhythm, even rhythm. Let's give it a try. We're gonna play the whole tune, two A's and two B's, and smooth it out. Even rhythm, even rhythm. And you may use some slurs like you would in a reel to help smooth it out. Um, mind where you put them for the string crossings, right? Some places it's gonna be easier to just play separate bows. <clears throat> the grand ending. Here we go. Triplets get very, very fast in a reel, so we just go down the scale. Man. We simplify out those triplets. Did you catch how I did that? Let's do that much again. Ready?
again, did you notice, instead of simplifying down the scale, and I actually did the triplets. That does happen sometimes in a straight hornpipe, in an even rhythm hornpipe. Sometimes they do play those triplets. They end up really fast at tempo, so you gotta be very clean with your hand. Now notice also what I did with my bowing. In the clog or dotted hornpipe, I would play those triplets separate, of course. Gives it that cheeky feel. When it's a real feel straight hornpipe, they just go by too quickly. I can't play those separate bows and keep it clean, so I'm gonna slur them. Slur, slur. One bow to one triplet, right? Let's try that together. the same like you would with the clog and just slur them? Let's give it a try. Super challenge. Play it or play around with this. straight hornpipe feel up, you'll hear when there are too many triplets. Um, or you'll feel when there are too many triplets, and that's okay. Just take a couple out because they're just decoration. I mean, come on, they're decoration in the dotted hornpipe. They're like extra, extra, extra crazy decoration in the uh, straight hornpipe. <laughs> so at your own discretion, uh, you could be tearlessly, tastelessly cheerful if you like with them. Um, it's super fun to play around with. So that's the bee's wing. Great request. Great excuse to get into these differences of styles. And now you know how to spot a hornpipe. Anytime you hear a tune that goes bum, 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 it's always at the ending. Sometimes it's even in the middle. Think about some tunes you know that it turns out are actually hornpipes. How about this one? Hornpipe end. How about this one? Uh, So now you can't unsee it, can you? <laughs> They're everywhere, these hornpipes. Even if they've absorbed into sounding kind of like a reel, or if they sound dotted like clog shot stress bay kind of area of the wilderness, they're still a hornpipe if they've got that fingerprint. Hornpipe end. All right, well I hope this gives you lots of fun things to play with. Key of B flat, fill in triplets, the bowings that go with them, how to defeat or master rather, uh, tricky sounding um, string crossing passages by practicing as in those double stops. Bees Wing is a treasure trove of great fiddle ideas. So I hope you had fun with this. As always, if you'd like to see sheet music for this or any future tunes of the month, make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter. Uh, just go to my website, www.mariblack dot com and uh, hit subscribe. I love to stay in touch with you guys and my special gift for those of you who stay in touch regularly via email is my uh, handwritten sheet music for uh, the current tune of the month. So if you're already subscribed, you already have this sitting in your inbox. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that and you will see future tunes of the month coming to an inbox near you very, very soon. And um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will look forward to seeing you right back here next month for, of course, da, 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 more tunes. See you then.